What's up guys, Jeff Olick here, and today we're going to be going over the A shape of the caged guitar system. Let's get right into it. Most of you know your A chord, your A cowboy chord, and we're going to be using that as a movable shape. A lot of you guys know this shape already, but we're going to introduce some cool little ideas that you can incorporate into it. Um, so what we're going to do, this is kind of one of your bar chord, usual standard bar chord shapes. So we're going to take our normal A fingering, but we're going to move it so we can free up our first finger, right? So we'll play it with all the other fingers and free up our first finger, right? And then we're just gonna slide it up two frets. But remember, all these open strings have to go up two frets as well. So that's our E string, and our A string, then we have the, these three holding down our D, G, and B, and then our first finger is barring across the high E string as well. Now you can play the low E string, like I said, but you don't have to. It's not mandatory. This isn't the most comfortable way to play this chord, right? Uh, this stretch right here between your first finger and second finger is kind of awkward. So a lot of guys will play it like this, where they bar the D, G, and B strings with their uh, ring finger. And that's a great way to play it. Another easy way to play it is to bar it with your pinky. But for today, let's bar it with our ring finger. So let's play uh, let's play a progression, something simple. So I, I just like to do like a one, four, five, one type of thing. Uh, if you're familiar with the Nashville number system, which we'll get to that in another video if you're not. Um, but it'd be a B chord to an E chord on the seventh fret to an F sharp on the ninth fret to a B chord on the second fret. So let's go. Cool. Okay. So a couple things you can do with this voicing. One, you can play it just as a power chord. There's a couple of different ways to do that, but one way is to do just the root and the fifth. So the A string and the D string. Now I'm muting the low E string with by just by touching the string. I'm not pushing it down, I'm just touching it. That gives that sort of sound. So it's not ringing out. Also I'm touching uh, the G string and the B string and the E string. So I'm strumming through the whole chord, but I'm only playing two notes. The, uh, the A string and the D string. So let's play the same progression. Now the, that is not either major or minor. So you could play that almost over any chord if you didn't know how to play major or minor. Um, or if you're playing some, you know, chunky palm muting things, you could do that. Um, another thing you could do is to put your pinky right below your ring finger. So then you would have root, fifth, and then another root. If you wanted to play just a little bit bigger of a voicing. But same thing. Right? This uh, voicing also works if you go down a string set. Right? That gets into our E shape. Uh, on this string, this is from our E chord, but the for power chord purposes, it stays, it looks the same. So, right? Another thing you could do if you're playing like hard rock and metal and stuff is to bar your first finger across the low E string and the A string. So you have low E, A, and then you have the D and G strings. Now 
Now let's go back just a second to the just the root fifth voicing. There's some cool stuff we can do with like a blues shuffle. If we take our pinky and extend it up two more frets, so I'm on the sixth fret of the D string. So let's play the progression with that, just the one, four, five, one. Right? There's some cool stuff you can do there. Go back to our major shape, the full, the full voicing. There's some cool stuff you can do with your pinky. So add your pinky on the B string, just one fret higher on the fifth fret. That becomes a sus chord, a sus four chord. So let's, uh, it'll give you kind of like a, a Rolling Stones, Keith Richards type of. Right, let's use that uh, for our progression. Uh, another thing you could play is just a sus two chord. So instead of our major voicing, we're gonna stand that up and play more of that power chord voicing, but then we are going to bar the top strings as well. So it'll be. So let's use that in the progression, right? It's a really pretty voicing for arpeggios. Um, let's do top three strings and let's do some like Hendrixy double stops. So yeah, I'm doing, I'm barring the, the top, the B and the E string on the second fret, and then I'm playing the G string on the fourth fret, and then I'm taking my pinky and hammering onto the fourth fret from the B string. All right, so let's let's do a... All right, so let's turn that into the progression. Right? There's some cool stuff you can do there. One more voicing I want to show you is more of that police vibe, and it's a little bit hard to play. I don't play this very often because I'm sloppy with it and I have tiny baby hands, but if you work up the strength, you can make it happen. But, so I'm doing second fret with my first finger on the A string, fourth fret with my middle finger on the D string, sixth fret with my pinky, on the sixth string, and then fourth fret with my ring finger on the B string. This is that police vibe. Uh. Right? So we turn that into the progression. Uh. My hands just do not want to play that. Last but not least, let's get to minor. You can play this chord instead of playing it with your fingers like that. Play your, play your root fifth root power chord and then add your middle finger on the third fret to make it minor. And then you'll bar this for your first finger across the high E string too. The cool thing with this shape is you can hammer on, if you bar your first finger across all the strings, you can hammer on with any one of your other fingers. Right? So I'm just, let's go. Uh... Right, simple, cool ideas you can do. You can do a hammer on above your middle finger with your pinky. Right, same thing. Right, 
cool things there. You, you could hammer on the whole chord. All right, you could take that, just the top three voicings, you could do your reggae. That's all coming out of the A minor shape, right? Or the A major shape for the earlier stuff. Um, so now let's take, for the last exercise, let's harmonize the chords up the scale. So our one chord is a B, right? We'll play a B major. Our two chord is up two frets and it's minor. Our two chord is almost always minor. Three chord is up two more frets and it's almost always minor. Our four chord is major. It's up one fret from there. So on the seventh fret. Uh, <clears throat> our five chord is up two more frets it's uh, almost always major. Our sixth chord is up two more frets. On the eleventh fret, it's almost always minor. Our seventh chord is up two more frets. It's on the thirteenth fret, and it's almost always diminished. <laughs> and for this shape, it's going to be uh, first finger on the thirteenth fret, middle finger on the fourteenth, pinky on the 15th and ring finger on the 14th and then major on the 14th fret or our B major chord on the 14th fret so let's let's just strum through it so major two frets is minor up two frets minor up one fret major up two frets major up two frets minor up two frets diminished. Up one fret major. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'll put some tabs on my website so you guys can download them. They'll put. There'll be a link in the description box. If you wouldn't mind, please give this video a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Also, if you hit me up with some comments, I would love to answer any questions. Uh, and in the next couple of videos, we'll go over the arpeggio shapes and the scale shapes and do another jam track. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed those uh, last couple of videos I did over the C shape. And so, um, yeah, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. All right. See you in the next video.